Are there any public comments that don't have to do with this specific case? <clears throat> If not, we'll move to the first and only case this evening, a notice of intent for construction of solar panel canopies uh, within the riverfront area, 182 Mount Palm Road. Uh, uh, Karen, there... There, it looks like there's one public comment. There's uh, Diane Scott. Oh, okay. No, I didn't see it. Thank you. You're muted. There so you go. I just have a question, and if it's something that I should take to a different place, let me know. But um, I live across the street from a building lot that has now been zoned. It's been divided into two lots, and it does abut a wetland. And I was just wondering, at some point, um, will that specific property come up for wetland review? Uh, there's no currently no um, structures. But there's no surveys. There's no plot plan yet that shows where the structures will be, but once that's submitted, is that something that you folks will look at um, only after the plans have been submitted with where the where the building is, or do you give instructions before the building is placed of where the building can go? We we respond to applications, uh, okay. so uh, if that's a jurisdictional area or some or all of that land is uh, a jurisdictional area, then whoever is going to do any work in that area will have to come before us. <clears throat> okay, thank you so much. Okay, sure enough. If nothing else, um, then uh, move on to that first case on uh, Mount Tom Road. Who's here to present on that? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, for the record. Christian Fallon, Principal Engineer and President of Fallon Corp. Here tonight representing Parallel Products. Um, <clears throat> Also on, on the uh, meeting is Scott Daggett, who is Senior Project Manager with Fallon Corp. And um, I believe Brad Holmes, our environmental engineer, will be will be joining <clears throat> as well. So Kat, oh, there it is. <laughs> I saw Kathy Holmes. <laughs> yeah, it's not letting me change my name, but I got it. Okay. Um so if you if I if I may. Uh, Mr. Chair, share my screen. Sure, sir. <clears throat> yeah, should should be all set. And uh, Mr. Holmes, what was your name? I I'll change it in the. Sure, Brad Holmes. Okay. You may wish it was Kathy after, but. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um. Yeah. Thank you for having us this evening. Um. As I stated, Christian Fallon, principal engineer and president of Fallon Corp. Uh, the, the subject site is located at 182 Mount, Mount Tom Road. Um, it currently contains a uh, hi highway auto, sal auto salvage yard. And let me know if the view changes. Sometimes it doesn't. You all see an aerial right now? Yes. Topographic. Yeah. So this is the, this is the site here. Um, the total site itself contains 13 acres. Um, it's bounded on the easterly side by Mill River, which you can see it wanders through um, all the way on the easterly portion of the site. On the westerly portion of the site, we have the rail the railroad. And then west of that, we have Mount, Mount Tom Road. Um, to the north and south are both un undeveloped parcels. Um, let me go back to the site plan. In regards to the resource areas of the site, um, besides Mill River, there was also um, the entire sites in the AE13 AE, uh, flood zone. Um, and also we have the BVW from the, the 100 foot buffer um, from the BVW that abuts the, the Mill River. So those are the, those are the resource areas um, of the site. As Mr. Chairman said, the applicant is looking to propose nine uh, solar solar canopies 
and um, also the other work involved is the concrete pads, which there will be four of them. Those pads total um, 1,570 square feet. <clears throat> From the last pad, there is an underground electric uh, conduit that would run to um, some poles that will be set um, near the near the garage area. Um, that's the majority of, of the work that will take place. Um, we have uh, permitted and constructed several, several of these projects um, throughout the state. <clears throat> and I can say as far as, as far as the work goes, it's really negligible. Um, the work that goes into these, into these solar canopies, um, which I take you to the presentation, you'll, you'll see as far as the con construction procedures that, that are involved. Um, I'd like to show you a site we just <clears throat> recently completed, which was um, Goyette's um, auto parts facility, which was in New Bedford, Massachusetts. I'll take you through some, some pictures here. You all see the facility? No. No. Oh, no. You're seeing a distorted uh, uh, slide th uh, that you just had on a moment ago. Uh, all right. Yeah, let me know when I'm talking if it doesn't switch, because sometimes it. How's that? Yeah. OK. Now we can see. That. Yeah. So this is the facility we, we just constructed. There were four, four large canopies. Um, the canopy structure itself is going to be very similar. Um, they all to the south at pretty much four and a half degrees. There are slots in between the panels, so the storm water um, hits the panels and, and drips down these all these drip edges here. Um, and what it does, it just mimics the the sheet flow runoff as it previously existed. The existing grades, none of the none of the grades underneath the canopies will change. Um, there's no, no material that's removed off site. Um, so it's why it's really very, very minimal. I'm going to hit stop share and go to the next one. Here's another picture of of the canopy looking up looking up at it gives you a good good visual what's the version the uh, vertical distance uh, to the bottom of the uh, panels from the ground um i can show you the plan it's uh, mostly 16 16 feet show you a cross section of it now <clears throat> There you go. So this is a good cross section of what what the uh, the panels would look like. So you have, I'll show you what the steel steel would be driven down into the into the ground, um, and I'll, I'll go over that slide with you. Then what what you see above ground is basically three feet. There will be a concrete protects the steel, um, and then the structure gets built above that. Typical minimum clear is sixteen feet. This allows the facility to, to operate just as they currently are with loaders, with forklifts to be able to lift the vehicles um, and maneuver underneath with no problem. Um, if there's ever a, a you know fire safety uh, vehicle that needed to access the site, this is enough clearance for them as well. Um, and like I said, we have we have designed and permitted several of these throughout the throughout the state. Um, wanted to show you the. So this is the the steel piles. Um, this was one which was actually done in the parking lot. Um, 
So you can see really the, the minimal disturbance here basically was cut. Um, this one was like a two by two square cut in the asphalt. And then the, there was a, uh, these get driven right into the ground, either most likely with an excavator. Um, and then the, the finished product that you see is basically right here. So this concrete just gets poured around it. Um, and then the structure gets built built above it. So you can see in here, very minimal, very minimal disturbance. So in our case, we have um, the flood zone. So we have to compensate for the flood zone. So the volume that's in the flood zone is basically the concrete and any steel section of this of this steel beam, which is very minimal. Um, I think in our case, we have a total of 943 cubic cubic feet in the in the storage and um, in the flood zone. We have proposed uh, compensatory storage for that, which meets um, well Protection Act's uh, performance standards for for work in the BLSF. Um, the other buffer zone work, as I stated before, we have um, work within the riverfront area. Um, so this site. Um, I wanted to show you aerial imagery from 1962 um, that we looked at the site was basically the same um, disturbance, which was which it was back then, which is obviously before the Rivers Protection Act and before the Wetland Protection Act. Um, Sorry, I'm slowing down here. Just the uh, trying to share the right, right file. I got like 15 of them open here. Uh, there we go. Okay, take your time. Yep, we're not going anywhere. Um, Sarah, we we've been working with Sarah on this project from the get go. She's been she's been really great. We've we've gone back and forth. Um, certainly, one of the comments was in regards to the Rivers Protection Act and how we meet or don't meet the performance standards, we certainly feel that this project, as I was stating in the, the historical photos from 1962, demonstrate that the limit of work was was previously previously disturbed. Um, and it was a salvage yard. Um, that being said, a, a previously developed riverfront area is defined as an area degraded prior to August 7th, 1996. By impervious surfaces from existing structures or pavement, absence of topsoil, junkyards, um, which this would have been considered, um, or abandoned dumping grounds. Um, so as far as the performance standards for the riverfront, um, we feel we're, we're certainly exceeding um, the performance standards and, and certainly providing a significant improvement with the plan that Brad Holmes um, from Environmental um, construction and restoration, consulting and restoration um, has provided. I don't know if the board has had a chance to review that. Um, Brad, Brad is here, and I would just like to turn it over to him real quick. Just to, I'll, I'll share that plan. Um, he's, he's the expert in environmental restoration, so I'll, I'll have him explain that um, as soon as I pull it up here. Thank you, Christian. As Christian's pulling up the plan, um, just to follow up on what he described, this this work does qualify under the river riverfront redevelopment regulations. Um, obviously, the site's been in in effect for a long time. I think that this is a great proposal because it also um, uniforms the site with the activities underneath. Uh, what we have done is we've delineated the the limit of the bank to the Mill River and the <clears throat> limit of the bordering vegetative wetland. You can see the flags. What we're proposing is um, as you move from the operational salvage yard towards the resource areas, there's a, there's a slope and it's vegetated and majority of the vegetation in, consists you know, within the buffer zone consists of non-native invasive species. So what we're proposing to do is to uh, have a, a, a 
management plan to remove invasive species and reintroduce native species. So over time, we'll improve the vegetative buffer and have a significant benefit to the site. It's not something that can be done uh, right away. It's a it's a it's a big project. Uh, you can see that it, it parallels the Mill River and uh, is basically the vegetative buffer at the site. So in the end, it will be a tremendous in, uh, benefit to the the wetland resource areas. And we've designed a step-by-step -step, um, management task for that to address the different species that are in there and then reintroduce native species to what would be uh, re remaining in the area. And the shaded area itself uh, is significantly uh, greater in size mm -hmm. than what we would need to do. Uh, we don't, we're not, because we're already working over existing degraded areas, it's not that <clears throat> the project requires mitigation or restoration in order to comply with the riverfront redevelopment regs. Uh, this is something that uh, is in addition just as a, as a site benefit. With that, I'll, I'll bring it back. Thanks, Brett. Um, yeah, overall, this restoration, we're almost close to an acre. He has 40,700 square feet. Um, so we feel, you know, with the with the flood storage, um, meeting the performance standards with that, um, with this type of project, we just feel it's a significant improvement. Um, I can honestly say I wish I wish you guys were closer to New Bedford to take the drive to the Goyettes facility, but it it's it's probably the best the best looking uh, auto auto salvage facility in the state. Um, significant improvement there with the with the canopies that went up, and I can feel. You say more about. Can you say more about uh, what constitutes an improvement at that site that you plan to replicate here? The biggest improvement here is going to be this, you know, this this restoration uh, mitigation plan that that Brad has proposed. Um, certainly, this area is degraded. Um, the invasive species that are all you know running up the slope, um, planting all these native native plantings. Um, over the course of probably, um, you know, two to three years, it's going to really improve um, the wildlife habitat. Um, and Brian may want to speak on that a little bit more, but with this kind of restoration, I mean, that's what you're going to be bringing to the site. Um, whereas, you know, in, you know, there's a lot of, you know, invasive species that are brunt. Uh, if you've been to the site to walk up and down that slope, um, you know, whether it's, you know, car tire parts, um, that stuff would be dragged out. The slope would be cleaned up. And the native plants. Um, therefore, you know, we feel like that's going to be the significant improvement overall. Um, and not to mention the whole, you know, um, energy savings here, putting this solar canopy up as well. In the photo of that other uh, uh, junkyard site, uh, it looked as if the ground had been um, cleared and graded and cars moved and restacked and so forth. Is that uh, proposed as part of this effort? Yeah, and, and that project, what we did, we did each canopy. Um, the operation still, they they still were operating every single day. We didn't slow them down. What we did is each canopy, um, they cleared the cars from the area we were working in. Um, so we did one canopy at a time. So the area would be cleared. Um, we would go in, install install the the footings um and then start erecting the, the solar array once once that was done they did they did bring in the cars and they did certainly line them up a lot more organized than what was there before um and it allowed them to you know get more organized with their car parts with their operation um so it definitely cleaned up the site quite a bit um and that site you know same same thing there was some, you know, over the years through different ownerships, they, they tend to, you know, tires tend to get moved around, fall down the slope. We cleaned up all the slope, cleaned up the work within the 25 foot buffer zone in that, in that place. And mm -hmm. basically same, did the same thing. And certainly now it's, it's night and day to, compared to what it was. Christian, Mr. Chairman, if I may. 
please. Uh, I'm Ted Custon, Vice President of Parallel Products. Um, I just wanted to add that, you know, um, what it does is when we go in and start, they basically have to clear out half of the yard. What it does is it forces out a turnover of old and junk cars that may just lie around for a long period of time. So it forces almost like a reboot and a restart of, of the yard in general, um, forcing out a lot of the older inventory that, you know, really has no value because we need the space to come to, uh, to build the project. Um, and you just end up with uh, a, a much uh, more organized, managed um, yard moving forward. And that's exactly what happened uh, um, at Goyette's. And now you can see when you walk around there, there's nice to find rows for storage of the cars because they want to keep them under nicely neat under the canopies. Because from their point of view, from a working environment, the the cars in the winter have no snow on them. So when you get a call, hey, I need a hood. Uh, on Monday morning, but we had a snowstorm on Sunday with five inches of snow. They can go out there. There's no snow on the car, um, and they can they can take that off. So it behooves them to just keep nice, neat rows inside of those those areas. Um, and then you know, also in the summer, uh, you know, in, in in August, you know, it's 105 degrees out. Um, these cars are actually in, in the shade, so when they go out there, um, you know, they're not the you know take off a hood again. You know, they're not touching a part that's you know extremely extremely hot because it was lying in the direct sunlight so it just leads to a um a, a much better uh operation and management plan going forward thank you sure anything else no i believe that's it for our presentation i'll be certainly glad to answer any questions uh the commission may have already a butters that are on. You address bordering land subject to flooding. We did. Um, we well, I haven't on... heard any any figures on, except for how many cubic feet we're going to be lost for storage. Um, are you yeah. Gonna, are you going to bring any back? Uh, there, there was. There was a figure was, mentioned in the uh, notice of intent, but I didn't see where on the plan this was going to be. Share my screen again. So if you take a look at um, this is sheet, sheet three. Um, we have the proposed, um, we have the tool up, up top with the penitentiary storage. Um, and we show the, the grading that's that's changing on the site. So this, this is in compliance with the requirements of DEP and meets the performance standards. I, I fail to see how it meets the performance standards of the uh... Flood zone at 122 and most of the sites under that. One thing I can say about the boring land subject of flooding, these are all pile supported. So it's not like we're bringing in fill or a, a foundation where you'd be building a FEMA compliant foundation or fill. These are whatever the, the flood waters would go around the piles, um, like a pier. Uh, it's somewhat uh, minimal, even though there are minimal, the project has been designed to create storage for whatever occupation those piles would would take within the, the at flood elevation and and disperse it. So I'll let you that, but you, this isn't well, like a structure, these are piles. It was not foot for foot compensation, which what the act calls for. So this was the table that we provided. It, it shows the net of the storage that's added. Um, so we did the cuts and fills and this is the total that we ended up coming up with. So the grades, the grades are changing um, a little bit on the site. And is that material being taken off site or are you moving it elsewhere on the site? The the material itself um, is just being redirected to a different elevation. 
And does the table take into account things for which details weren't provided, like the equipment pad area and uh, other things that we didn't have any fill information about? Yeah, we did. Um, let's see, I believe it's on here. Um, yeah, There you go. It shows all the has the <clears throat> ads in here. Um, what's the total of those were? One one thousand five hundred seventy square feet. Does that address your question, Sarah? Uh. I mean, we don't, so we don't have any details about that. So it, it's hard, it's hard to know from the table where the cuts are being provided and how things are moving around on the site. I think what Sarah will be helpful if we probably just do a grading plan with that, with the um, compensatory storage, because it's tough to see the grades and the contours here with all these solar rays. Originally, we just had a layout, but I think it'll be a lot easier for you to visualize um, if we just had a simple grading plan that just shows that we can we can add that plan to the set. And uh, with the other example of the the site that you showed from New Bedford, it looked like that had been a paved area to begin with, but this one is dirt, and it's proposed. No, it dirt. was. Yeah, no, it was that one was mostly a, a gravel. Um, crushed stone site. Some areas were uh, were grass, um, but that one it was mostly all the access ways were all um, stone. There's no pavement. So, if you'll be regrading the entire site, was that taken into account with your riverfront area alteration numbers? Um. Well, we're not changing the we're not changing the material. Um, but, but if you are you grading the entire site, that wasn't clear from the project plan set. Not the entire site, but portions where we're showing the grading. That's that's where we're gonna just to meet the standards. That's what we have to do. There's certain elevations that we need to meet. Um, so was that taken into account with your riverfront alteration numbers? Um, Brad, did we, is that part it's of all, the, It's all, it's uh, all, everything that's proposed needed. to occur is all within existing disturbed or degraded riverfront. The whole site is basically degraded. Um, so anything that you do in here doesn't, isn't going to have a, an impact as far as the numbers. There's no you, trigger. You do need to quantify your area of riverfront alteration. I'm, I'm asking if the number you provided in the notice of intent is accurate and includes the grading or if it's or if it it not, based it on not, Yeah, the square footage area did not include that. I mean, we could, we could add that. Other questions, comments from commissioners? There's, there's there's no compensation for the columns above 118 feet, 122. Are they H beams or are they you know circular columns or, or what? It's kind of tough to tell from the drawings. I'll pull up the um. I mean, there were like H beams on the. Uh, the other site that you did, but I wasn't sure 
you know, were these plans or what the columns were and, and how much volume was being lost just at the moment. That's, that's probably negligible, but I don't know because I didn't have the size of the columns. So the columns are all on the solar, the solar plans um, themselves. They're all hey, I didn't see those at all. Hmm. Should have details on all of them. That are, detail was there. They are H beams. They are H beams. Yes. Christian, just look at the bottom right, the the footing base plate detail. You can see the pattern of the column. Yeah, I was trying to see if they had the spec out. Which yeah. exactly in I don't think it's spec out on these. Okay. If I had seen this drawing, I wouldn't have had any questions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's in our set. But... Sarah, did we not submit this plan set? These are no, that was not in our plan set. I'm in bar C. That we have hmm. just that view when I, I couldn't tell whether they're round columns or yeah, right. Really. Sorry about that. Oh, I had no way of knowing how much <clears throat> volume they were taking up. I, mean, I know it's only two feet. Of Volume from one eighteen up to I used to go to commission meetings and that stuff and some of the commissions, if you had chain link fence, we want to know what the volume of the chain link fence was. <laughs> and the calculations would drive you nuts. That's why I was being a little particular with this. I didn't see any compensation at all for what do you have, 72 columns, I believe. The whole thing. Yeah. But there's eight columns for the bigger areas and small. Always rules. Other questions, comments from commissioners? Yeah, I guess I've got a question. Um, I think a comment was made that some of the old inventory would be removed during uh, construction. Um, I was just curious, uh, what, what fraction of the total inventory is that likely to be? Um, I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't give you a guess on that uh, right now. I mean, it's something that we could probably get you a good estimate on and get back to you uh, back to you with. But I'm guessing at the other site uh, that we just completed, they reduced their inventory in the yard by over fifty percent. But that's so, not part of this application, so that's not something the commission can take into consideration right. and this right. is okay. the only thing that's been presented are the panels themselves so we don't right. it's it's been indicated that the junkyard function will continue exactly as it exists currently yeah we certainly could we can certainly try to get a percentage for you i mean they they will be replaced though over time so it's it's a you know it's an yeah. old inventory out new inventory in so they will be replaced over the overall inventory doesn't go down it's just it's 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 circulated out i should say yeah i mean i guess related what was striking to me about the the planting plan was that it's essentially planting on the least disturbed areas of the site and that no functions of the junkyard were that are really you know a, a mess i mean tires and oil and all sorts of junk none of that is proposed to be mitigated or changed or improved in any way. There are no, within the operational uh, salvage yard, there are no proposed restoration activities um, within the operational yard. From the operational yard to the resource area of the river, that is the area that's proposed. And as Christian said, 
within that area as part of the restoration, you'd be cleaning up the whatever miscellaneous debris is in that area <laughs> along with restoration. The only thing that was included in the information provided to the commission was just the planting. There was no information about removal of tires or debris or or anything else. Well, obviously we wouldn't be uh, doing a cleanup in the area and, and walking by a tire and planting amongst it, but we can add that detail in, in the, if we encounter debris during the restoration activities, it will be hand removed and disposed of. Uh, disposed of. What, what we did in the last, the last order of conditions that was actually put into the into the order um, within the restoration mitigation area, any any debris um, would be would be removed and removed off site. You know that being said, you know tires, car parts, um, any other you know miscellaneous junk. And that speaks to the direction of the concerns that I had. That if the the uh, we need to see that there is significant improvement um, in the overall project area, not just that it meets the minimal standards uh, in some technical sense, but that it constitutes a, a genuine improvement. Um, and it, uh, you know, I, 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 I come from a world where I've done a lot of um, uh, site selection for major facilities and acquisitions and so forth. So that the idea of, I don't know what your, uh, internal rate of return you calculated on this project is, or what your hurdle rate is, or how big a spread there is. But um, for me, there there needs to be a more comprehensive explanation of how this is going to demonstrate uh, a real improvement. And that might in include, um, we don't want to design the project for you, but that might include uh, how there's going to be a re reduction of uh, sheep flow into resource areas, how, how there uh, is going to be uh, an, an overall improvement in the reduction of uh, a lot of the scrap and tires. I understand that the inventory of cars may in fact um, uh, be returned to the current number or the current square foot that's covered, uh, but if it could be done in a way that, uh, well, here's what we're going to do to make sure that there's uh, less um, uh, of the, the fluids and of the batteries, the lead, the, all, the, all of the things that go into this stuff uh, at a junkyard, finding its way into uh, the resource area. So uh, that was what was missing for me. Is, uh, how does this really demonstrate? I understand the plantings represent some improvement and that's uh, not to be ignored, but uh, I wanted if you have a, a couple of organizations making profit from an existing organ existing uh, site that would never be permitted in today's world, um, then I, I want to see some uh, significant improvement. So my, my inclination would be uh, that you um, re submit um, the application with some of the things that we've just uh, discussed today. Um, I, I I am hopeful that we can find a way to. Uh, support the installation of major solar yeah, rays yeah. that Paul well, I, <clears throat> because it's not paved under the canopies it sounds like there's going to be significant uh, water flow off the drip edge straight down and did I read correctly that automobiles would be placed underneath that drip line to mitigate any uh, disturbance of the soil Well, the, the automobiles are typically underneath all, all of the canopy. Um, so that's where they, 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 they would be stored anyway. Um, but to mitigate the runoff, they'd have to straddle the boundary there between the inside and outside, right? Yeah, the, the impervious area isn't changing. So there's, there's no increase in runoff um, from installing the canopies. <clears throat> Another question I have, since I had the misfortune of paddling that section of the Mill River many years ago, I was struck by um, how polluted and stagnant it was. And I'm wondering, will this actually represent an upgrade in, in the quality of the river? We're not proposing any water. We're not doing anything in the resource area of the, the river itself. Yeah. I'm not sure where yeah. all that you know, gradient material is, but um, yeah. anything or as a as described by removing existing old material and improvements is 
have some sort of a, an improvement. As far as you know, as far as stormwater goes, you're you're, you're taking a poor, poor. As far as curve number curve number goes, you're taking a poor condition of that slope, and you and you do the vegetation, which would be a good condition. So a lot of that sheet flow that's going into that vegetation that will be absorbing it. So overall, it'll be an overall you know reduction in an impervious um and in, in runoff to the to the to the river, um and we can provide those stormwater calculations to, to demonstrate that. And it, currently the, the site just flows untreated wholesale into the resource area and, and that's not proposed to change, correct? I don't think so. Not proposed to change. The only thing that's changing is the, the, <clears throat> the mitigation, the, the plant things that we're doing in there. Um, it's really creating a good, you know, um, vegetated diagram um, of catching the catching any of the sheet flow before it enters the river. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's important to note that the area where you're proposing the plantings is the least disturbed area on the site. I mean, there are, there's some ancillary tires and other <clears> things <throat> that definitely shouldn't be there that should be cleaned up anyway, regardless of this project, but you're not reducing the amount of impervious area or increasing any uh, stormwater treatment or any other market improvement, except for along that, that bank area. It's almost we're almost like creating a basically a, a bio area, but it doesn't have the volume. Um, it's certainly capturing the sheet flow of that whole entire area. Um, so I would I would disagree. I would I think it's a significant improvement in regards to uh, stormwater runoff. You're I will say that being around going to the, go ahead being around these sites and as described the operation of the yard is now going to have to be a little bit more uniform. Um, they're going to have to work around the, the panels and the, in the, uh, you know, not the panels, but the, the beams and they, it's going to be a, a cleaner operation. Uh, right now there's, uh, there is a, a, a plan or a, or a methodology out there, but it's going to be restricted. So <clears throat> just in the, op just as, as installation of the, the process is going to, be a better uniform system than exists today. So, uh, and the opportunity to get in there and get the old material out, go through your inventory and be uniform, uh, you know, that is itself a huge environmental improvement. And I'd wanna see all of that uh, documented in your application that um, here's how it's gonna to continue to be uh, an improvement in the future. Um, uh, and so far I haven't seen that. I've heard it verbally from yeah. you um, and seen your photos of other similar sites, but uh, I think we need to see that in the plan. Yeah, I agree. I think we can, we can, we can have a document, we can have a document, which is basically a site improvement plan. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I'll document that can be noted in the, you know, if the board should agree to approve the project and part of the order of conditions that can reference that. Um, and that will go on, you know, for perpetuity of the of the site. Mm -hmm. yeah, Great if, idea. If you, yeah, if you've got any evidence that the uh, um, transport and export of organic uh, oils, other organic materials, or, or metals, will to the river will be reduced, it would be great to see that. Yes. <clears throat> Be happy to see you make that case. Um, so, um, if I, I I don't know from other commissioners who haven't spoken, I don't, I don't know if uh, this is a consensus. But my inclination would be uh, to continue the hearing, uh, suggest that the applicant work with Sarah on some of these uh, specifics, yeah. and come back to us at a future time when these items have been addressed. Yeah, I see nodding on the part of commissioners. Um, that acceptable as well to the applicant? Yes. And yes. Sarah, I just volunteered you. Is that acceptable to you? Sure, that's fine. Um, I mean, do we think that a meeting in March might be enough time? Later than that? No, I, that definitely March. Um, we'll, I'll follow up. Um, Scott and I will follow up with you um, early next week and 
come up with a game plan. And we'll certainly have Brad involved with it as well. Great. So, All right. Um, uh, so if that's the case, the commission would just need to um, move to continue to, I guess, March, either the 14th or the 28th at 530, whichever works. March 14th sound okay to the applicant? Yes. Yes. All right. Um, Sarah, do we need to take any possible public comment before we uh, have that motion? Uh, the, the hearing is still open, so we, we could bounce it to them. But since we're here, you could certainly open it up to, to any public comment that is here now. Are there any uh, members of the public who would like to uh, ask a question or make a comment? If not, uh, uh, someone on the commission uh, want to make a motion to continue uh, this case with that suggestion that the applicant work with Sarah to come back to address some of these issues more explicitly in a future application and uh, set that date for the 14th of March at 5.30. So moved. Seconded. Second. Made and seconded. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, roll call, Sarah. Roll call vote, Jen? Yes. Mason? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Paul? Yes. David? Yes. And Kevin? Very good. Look forward to hearing back from you. You too. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Uh, that was the only hearing we had. Uh, <clears throat> Sarah, any mail or emergency permits that we need to review? No, nothing from me. Any other uh uh, issues or topics uh, on the part of the commissioners that uh, want to bring up before we close? I think we've decided to keep keep things on Zoom and revisit the question in the spring uh, after we get yep. past the current respiratory season. Um, <laughs> but uh, we will revisit that. It'd be nice. Uh, 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 Beth and I were at the site visit uh, for this last case uh, a couple of days ago with Sarah, uh, and it's always nice to actually see people in person and have yeah, real face-to-face yeah. uh, -face interactions. So uh, hopefully we can pull that off uh, sometime soon. Great. I'm sorry I missed it. I came two hours late because I ah. marked it down on my calendar when I was in the Phoenix area, which is oh, I've, uh, I've two done hours that. off. <laughs> oh, my mistake. <laughs> 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 All right. I, right. I will set up another site visit once we have additional information. I would definitely. And when we have that. a more comprehensive set of application uh, materials, then we can actually look at what they're proposing to change and do. Uh, I think, yeah, if they can make it a, a, a positive uh, change, not only to the current cleaning up the mess and planting of, uh, 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 of uh, place, a buffer area, um, yeah. uh, then if, if they can also indicate how the operation of the yard in the future will also be improved um, for environmental purposes, that, then uh, that'll all be good. So look forward to hearing I, more about that. I, I do have one comment. I don't know, does anybody remember the massive flooding to the Mount Tom Road back, I think in the 80s, where the entire road was underwater and people were boating on it? Um, I, I do remember that was on both sides of the river, actually. Yes. And I'm just thinking, what would happen to this? I mean, those cars were totally flooded. Um, and I just can't imagine the environmental damage from leakage from uh, all those volatile compounds in the cars. But I didn't think it was appropriate to bring it up tonight. I just have that vivid memory of that gross stormwater flooding. Right. I I remember I think it went all on the Hadley side, it was uh, rendering a lot of the uh, farm area completely yeah. inundated there. Yes, I think we'll see more of that. <clears throat> Anything else? Any other comments, questions, observations? If not, when's the next meeting, sir? Uh, February 22nd should be our, our next meeting. Definitely, right. we definitely won't meet the eighth. I don't know if anything will come in for the twenty second, but I I should have some other items for the agenda. Okay. Yes. But the, <coughs> so so there's there's nothing coming in on the eighth. All right. 